is up everybody? Welcome back to Alt Knots for another day here in the Yarn Dungeon. Today is all about empties. So I love this day. Like at the end of the month, I like to go back and look at all of the tags of yarn that I've used throughout the month. So every time I have a tag that I've completely used up, I pop it into my little trick or treat planter here. And at the end, I just go back and sift through, see what I loved, what did I hate? What do I absolutely need more of? What will I probably never use again? Because there's always a couple of those for every month. So if you like chit chatting yarn, this is a fantastic day because I have a lot to go through. March was definitely a for me project month. There is a lot of stuff that I made just for myself that didn't even end up on this channel because for one reason or another, I just made it super quick and forgot to film and or I just made it for myself. It was just end of the night type of thing. So if you're interested in some of the other yarn that I've used, definitely stick around. Make sure you grab yourself some caffeine. Let's go grab that trick or treat planter. So like I said, this thing is full this month. Like there is so much stuff in here. A nice variety too. Normally what happens is I fall in love with a type of yarn and I'll just like use that and then ride that out for the entire month. This one was a little bit different. We're gonna set that over there. Right off the top, okay. Impeccable Yarn, Loops and Threads by Michaels. This is a must have in the Yarn Dungeon. I use this for so many different things. This one in particular is called Citroen and I'm using this for my Tunisian crochet throw, which is not done. I have quite a bit to do. Let me grab it, I have it. If I have the projects, I'm gonna grab them. So let me grab it. The thing about this yarn is that it's just really durable. It's super, super affordable. So when I do really big projects, I love using this yarn. Even like cardigans that I'm gonna wear on the day to day, I tend to navigate towards this type of yarn. It's wound really tight. It's super great for beginners. And here you can see, this is just a Tunisian crochet throw. It uses the honeycomb stitch. If you have been on my any of my lives, you've seen this so many times now because it's a lot. Like this is a lot to do. I'm using an eight millimeter Tunisian crochet hook, but like there is over a hundred rows that I need to do and I'm only in the fifties. So we have a lot to go left here. Here's just a close up of what that yarn looks like. You can see super beginner friendly type of yarn wound really nicely. None of the fluff is going to come off. It's not going to get caught on your hook. It really is just one of those go-to yarns that I have for day-to-day -day type of projects. Next up, we have Wander Yarn. This is Furl's acrylic yarn. I used a ton of this in March. First and foremost, I made a cardigan with it. I created this All Hollows cardigan to kind of bring on spooky spring, like a little bit of Halloween in the springtime. So this is some of the new colors that they had out, which is Moonbeam and this is Campfire, I think is what it's called. Obviously the black that they had, that was just like their normal yarn that they already had from their line. Oh, and then the patina. So the ribbing here is a patina. I'm just gonna throw it on so you can kind of see. This yarn is super, super soft. Like blankets and stuff, this would be 100% perfect for. I honestly just knew as soon as I saw it that I wanted it to be a cardigan. Like I had to have it in cardigan form. So I just made this one nice and flowy. Show a little bit of it here. There's still a couple of ends that I need to weave in, but you know what, that happens with granny scare cardigans. It's just the nature. There's always gonna be a couple that I end up missing, but this thing is really warm, like way warmer than I thought it was gonna be. 100% acrylic, worsted weight, number four medium, same with the impeccable, number four medium. That's my go-to, so that's why I have a lot of this stuff in here. But I made this, I made a couple of wall hangings. Some of those were gifts, so I don't even have those anymore. And they did drop some new colors as well, which I have a video of that if you want to see the brand new colors. There's only three of them here in this cardigan, but there's quite a few more, including this one that I really, really want to go ahead and create something with it. It is a bright, bright pink, 
And I'm not really a huge pink person normally, but this one is just screaming to me. It's like monster high realness and I need to create something with this. If you haven't checked it out yet though, like seriously, go have a look. I linked it down below or on their site. It's everywhere, honestly. What else do we have in here? Okay, we have some Miss Babs. This one is Pumpkin Apocalypse. And this is a really special project of mine that definitely did not get done in March because it's kind of going to be an ongoing project. Honestly, there's just a lot of moving parts to it and it's really, really thin. Like I said, worsted weight, that's kind of my jam. That's where I like to stay. And this one is very, very tiny. This one is a fingering weight, 100% super wash wool. There we go. Close up of the sticker here, but I do have the yarn. Even though the project isn't finished, I will show you what I got done so far. Chilling in my little blood covered bowl here. I am so excited about this, even though it's taking forever. 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. And honestly, I'm just not putting any pressure on myself. Like this is supposed to eventually be a cardigan. So you can see that I have a ton of work left to do. Like honestly, just a ton of work to do here. The pattern that I'm using this from is from the Crochet Foundry magazine, which is, you can also find that on Furls. They come out with one each season. And for this one, there was a very flowy type of cardigan that I saw and I was like, ah, I feel like I need that. I don't normally make cardigans with anything lower than like, like 4.5 millimeters. That's normally my cap. I'm like, okay, that's really, really low. And that's going to take me a hot second to do it, but okay. In fairness, I probably only did an hour at a time and I didn't do it every single day. So if I want to like power through and get this done by Halloween, which is what I'm hoping for, I, I really need to like put it on my schedule or something. I'm like an hour every single day, probably in the morning and the PM. I should just correlate this to the Haunted Audible book club that we have. So whenever I listen to this, I should work on this. This. that way I can finish it up here because this is all we have like I said this is the back panel and this is not even I mean we have a back crop top that's what we have right here that could be cute though if I get tired of it maybe I should just make it into a crop top but I have a ton of the yarn here left still I can show you a little close-up I mean obviously you see it worked up but this yarn color is just fierce I love this so much nothing screams Halloween more than this yarn right here. So I needed to go ahead and create something special with it. And I'll be so excited once this is done. I ended up using two hanks of yarn already. Well, I used one and then this is the second one here, but I have four more left. I ordered a couple more last week cause I just, I know I'm gonna need more. Like four is not gonna make this cardigan because if you wanna check it out, the picture, the finished picture is down below, but basically it's a cardigan that's super flowy and you can kind of like wrap the front around, if you know what I mean. So the front is very flowy, obviously it's open, but it kind of overlaps a little bit and then that's what creates the flowiness to it. So obviously the front two panels are going to be a little bit bigger than the back, which means I'm definitely going to need more yarn. The plus side to this is I've now found out that Miss Babs has Halloween yarn pretty much for the entire year. And it doesn't say like out of stock or, you know, limited edition or anything like that. So I was able to order more, which is amazing because not only is there this, but there's a bunch of different stuff as well on that site. I will link it down below again. Go ahead and check it out if you're in the market for some Halloween yarn. Wander, wander, wander. Like I said, I used a ton of this. Diablo yarn. So this is a mohair and acrylic blend from Hobie. This was one, it was just something I made for myself. It was a sweater that I made. Unfortunately, I'm finding that mohair kind of irritates my allergies a little bit. So I think I'm gonna have to gift this sweater away because it's all made of this. All I did was take two of these together because it's really, really thin. What is it? Yeah, it's a lace weight. So it's very, very thin. So in order to make it into a sweater, obviously I had to double it up and everything. So I went through a ton of these, probably like, 12 or so more. I'm sure I'll continue to find them as I go, but like, honestly, yeah, so freaking many of these. Every time I put it on, my eyes get a little bit watery and I'm like, dang it, because I love mohair so much. And especially this, oh, it's just like, it's so soft. It's beautiful. The drape is absolutely gorgeous. So here it is. It's still attached on the bottom. Like I said, I haven't finished up the bottom, but just very, very light, fluffy, flowy. Not gonna touch it for too long. Cause like I said, it kind of irritates 
my allergies, but all I did was a distress sweater. That's really it. Distress sweater, and then I used a little bit of the red Diablo yarn here and seamed it all together. Just very, very distressed. Nothing even or anything clean about it, which I love. I was making this for the Friday the 13th, which is coming up in May. I was thinking that this would be kind of fun to do and then I was gonna put patches on it and stuff like that. But every time I would pull it out, my eyes would start watering it and I was finally just like, okay, we finished this. Every time it irritates your eyes. So like, obviously there is a direct correlation, but I was trying to fight it because I was like, I just love my hair. I don't know, it's just so soft and you can't really achieve this type of look with any other yarn out there. So, Sadly, I think I'm gonna have to just like finish this up real quick and then donate it to somebody else that loves and can tolerate mohair. If I had to have one favorite yarn, hand dyed yarn, that I purchased for this entire month, this one has to be it. So this is from Muse 2320, which you already know that is one of my favorite places to get hand dyed yarn from. But the thing that is really, really amazing about this particular hank of yarn is that it was a fundraising yarn as well as a beautiful piece of art. So this, the name of this yarn is hashtag I stand with kit. It came along with this little slip that says, thank you so much for your support. Each hank of I stand with kit equals an $8 donation to support LGBTQA youth and each set of love stitch markers, which I totally missed out of because everybody loved them so much. They sold out so quick, equaled a $10 donation. Together we can do some pretty beautiful things. Love Muse. So this was just a really, really special yarn to me. And so I knew that I wanted to create something that was a wearable because I wanted to be able to show it, like show it to the world, have it be on display. I didn't want it to be something that was going to be permanent in the yarn dungeon. I wanted to like wear it out in the world. So what I came up with was this amazing thing. And it is just a little mesh crop top and it's gorgeous. Honestly, it's absolutely gorgeous. So it supports and shows the trans flag colors here and they are beautiful. Like honestly, it's so beautiful. Let's do a little close up there and I'm in love with this honestly like this took me a little bit this took me I sat down and finished it all in one weekend but I started like Friday morning because once again this was a what is it it's a four ply DK weight again a little bit thinner than what I'm normally used to but I'm so glad that I went this direction because as you can tell like the drape is just gorgeous on this like honestly so gorgeous let me throw it on real quick it's gonna be so perfect for the summertime it's just like a nice little thing to throw over the construction was really really simple too it's just a front panel and a back panel then we seam them together just right at the end there seam a little bit together and do a ribbing around all I did was two rows for ribbing that was it I just really wanted to make something that was super super easy very beginner friendly even though it uses a really really thin weight of yarn and it's gonna take a while to build up as compared to like a worsted weight I made the construction on it super super simple for the reason that I want every and anyone who wants to create this and use their pride colors go ahead and create this have this ready for pride season for pride every day I mean honestly I've just been rocking this around the house because it's so freaking comfy I can't rock it outside yet because it's like 32 degrees best believe as soon as it gets a little bit warm and I start seeing that Sun this is gonna be so perfect what I'm like going outside literally doing anything honestly it's gonna be perfect for everything currently this is not on her site this was a order ahead of time and then you would get it after she made her big batch of it but this is the second round so you never know if you love this you're obsessed with it and you want a chance to go ahead and get it definitely get on her newsletter like that's the first place you're gonna hear about it also on insta she's on tiktok she's everywhere just like go ahead and follow her literally everywhere and i will put the foundation that this fundraiser was for down below as well toasty what did i use this yarn for 
I honestly don't remember. Oh, that's odd. That hardly ever happens. So this is Brene Toasty. Honestly, if I'm gonna guess, I'm thinking that I used it for beanies because I didn't have that much of this left. So this is a discontinued yarn. So Brene Toasty from Yarnspirations there. It's a big, thick, and chunky type of yarn. You use a six millimeter crochet hook for this. So not like super big and chunky, but like fairly chunky. This one was in shadow, so it was like a gray color. I'm, I'm gonna guess that I made beanies from it. This one is ginormous and huge, and I know exactly what I did with this one. This is the Bernate Blanket Extra Thick. Once again, from Yarnspirations. That's what it looks like there. I love this stuff. I hope and hope that they continue to make this stuff because this is my favorite yarn to use for rugs. And like, yeah, the end, just for rugs. You can use it for like pillows and stuff like that. And I have in the past used it for that. And blankets, obviously there's a blanket here in the front, but rugs, it's just so perfect. So I have a ton of this. I just went through my house and honestly just kind of like freshened up my rugs. So many, and Joanne was having a huge sale on them too, which Joanne's often does with Bernay. They have these on sale quite often. My rugs are kind of gross at this moment and or they are in the laundry. So I'm not gonna go ahead and drag it up here to show you like all crumbs and stuff on the rugs But just trust me. They're amazing. All I did was uh, black. I think that's the color that I got carbon All right carbon big twist value yarn. I have a huge stockpile of this stuff like honestly at one time I was obsessed with it and so I was like, I'm just gonna stock up. They always have it on sale at Joann's, especially like Black Fridays. You can get them like $1.99 or something like that. Whenever they have yarn sales, this is normally gonna be a part of their sale. This and the Red Heart Super Saver, like they go on sale quite often. They correlate, they do their thing there at Joann's. This is a five millimeter crochet hook, once again, for number four medium. Nice worsted weight, 100% acrylic. It's really, really good for like durability and like washing and stuff like that. Okay, what do we have next here? More Wander yarn. I'm gonna keep finding those all over the place. Big twist, big twist cuddle. Okay, so something new that I did this month was venture into the world of plushies. I have forever said that I just really, really love wearables. That's why I don't make stuffies and plushies and things like that, but I had an amazing collaboration this month to work up a baby Baphomet. So I used this Big Twist Cuddle. 100% polyester, there is 300 grams in here. It's a lot, basically from two of these. So I got a red and a black, and from two of them, I was able to make two pretty big plushies. Let me grab it. Here is this one. My cat is on the other one, so we're not gonna disturb her right now, but here is the baby bath mitt. So the original one uses a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. This one ends up using, I don't remember, an eight millimeter crochet hook. So I blew it up quite a bit here, but I love it, like 100% love it. But it's kind of opened up a brand new world of plushies to me because now I'm kind of obsessed. Like I want to create more, I want to, especially because Jody, who is the amazing human behind this pattern, has so many creepy plushy patterns that I'm like, okay, I wanna get more into this. I wanna find some more, I wanna try some more out. And there's like creepy food in there too. So there's like an ice cream one. There's like a cookie, one. like there's a lot. Just check it down below. I'm not gonna go through all of them. Trust me, if you like creepy cutesy type of plushies, this is the site for you. We have another Muse 2320. This one is octopus ink. Okay, what did I use this for? I feel like I'm still using it. I used it for ribbing on a crop top that I made. The crop top isn't finished, it's in one of my totes. I mean, as the octopus ink would have you imagine, it was a black yarn that had a little bit of blue throughout it too, which was super fun, and that's why I wanted to put it on the edging of my crop top. Again, not done. I'm not gonna go dig it out at this moment. More big twist, but big twist tube. Okay, yeah, these are, these are different. Big Twist Tubular. So this stuff is 
ginormous. If you haven't worked up with this, it's just a whole nother experience. Like this stuff is wild. So it's yarn by definition, but it's basically fabric that's sewn together and stuffed back up with polyfill to make it super big, thick and chunky. Once again, it works really, really well for those amazing blankets or like throw blankets that you can put on the end of your bed. Like if you have an animals and stuff like that, that chill in your house, they love this yarn. I know this because I have three kitties that own my house and they absolutely love this stuff. Since they love the blankets and have also made pillows from it and they like to sit like on the top of it so it like squishes it down, I thought, you know what, hey, here's a pattern right on the top and it's this cute little pet bed. Why not go ahead and make this? So, and it says on the back here, in order to finish a pet bed, all you need is two balls of this yarn. So that's what I did, I got two of that. Have they used it a single day since it's been finished? Absolutely not, it has sat there. None of them have sat in it. Now is there a chance I've just not seen them in it? Maybe, but I'm gonna be real honest, I just really think they don't like it. I don't know, it's probably because I put a lot of effort into it, I really wanted them to use it, and so in cat language, they're like, oh you want me to use that? guess I'm not going to. They haven't used it. It's right next to a nice vent, so it's nice and warm and everything. Basically, I just feel like at this point, I'm gonna have to frog it and use it for something different because if they don't like it and they're not gonna use it, I might as well use it for something different. So if you have suggestions of what to use, let's see how much is in here. There is, okay, so this is a number seven jumbo, uses a 15 millimeter crochet hook, and there is 750 grams in here. And I, like I said, I have two of them. I put two of them together to make this bed. I guess I should have just made it for something for myself and then put it on my bed and act like I was using it. Then maybe they would have used it. I don't know. Probably though. We have some Mace of Skein yarn. So like I said, this is kind of my go-to yarn of Macy's. This is the Shadow Cat. Mace of Skein, there is her logo there and the colorway Shadow Cat, 100% super wash merino wool, 100 grams, beautiful, beautiful hand dyed yarn. If I have a pattern or a project, like I wanna gift away to someone and I'm like, ooh, I wanna use some nice fancy hand dyed yarn because I know you're gonna appreciate this hand dyed yarn, this is my base yarn that I use for that. So I honestly can't tell you what I use this for. All I know is I used an entire hank of it for the month of March. If it was only one honestly there's still a bunch of there's another one in here okay this one's super random but I had a little bit of the Black Friday acrylic yarn left from Hobie and so this isn't a yarn that's on their site anymore once again it was discontinued obviously it was limited edition for Black Friday season I think they have some cotton Black Friday left at this moment in time but it's all meant to be limited edition so like don't quote me on that it could be out right this second I had a little bit left and I wanted to finish I made a cardigan during December with this yarn and I just didn't like how I finished the edging yeah so I'm kind of like taking it apart it was totally finished the edging I just wanted to do something different I thought I wanted it to be flowy but I want to go ahead and make like ribbing for this and then the bottom that's where it was at I only did a single crochet all the way around the bottom and then decided that I wanted a big thick chunky bottom but I love this. So like I said, this is not new. This is from all the way back in December, but we can toss it on. Let's toss it on. Both of this is the acrylic yarn. It's that thick, solid granny square here. It's gonna look a little weird because I pulled the entire, like this is gonna have thick ribbing, so it's gonna pull it over a little bit more. But for right now, here's what it looks like. Very simple, and then to connect everything together, it's the zigzag stitch, which, there we go, you can kind of see it in the lighting. It's kind of hard because it's like black and red, which is like, ah, contrasting for your eyeballs. But I used the zigzag to pull it all together here. This was another one of those that I didn't have a pattern written down for it. It was just a I made it type of pattern. So if we want this pattern, I guess shout it out down below. Otherwise, it was a just for fun type of pattern. So yeah, just one of those though. I honestly don't think I have any more than that left. I was 
shocked that I actually had that, to be honest. Red Heart Super Saver Stripes, and this one in, is in Bright Stripe. So that's what we have there. If you know Red Heart Super Saver, like I said, it's nothing new. This is something that I just had laying around, and there was a couple of people that had asked me to make them a matching mitten and scarf. Mitten, no, mitten, cowl, and hat to go with it. So just a giant rainbow. That's pretty much what it turned out, and it was so awesome. I did like a little cable on the hat too. It looked really great, but number four medium, once again, 5.5 millimeter. I actually did the mittens on my adding machine, the cowl on the adding machine, and then the hat, since it had cables, I just did that in crochet form. But I ended up just using one, which is pretty good. All of that stuff for one. What else do we have in here? We have another Muse 2320, and this is part of her sock tail, which is adorable. I love that name just in and of itself. And this picture is so freaking adorable too. So the sock yarn matches the color of a cocktail. Obviously I had to go ahead and get a grasshopper one. And this is not the first of the grasshoppers that I've gotten because I just love the color combo. I don't have the toe part anymore, but I have a little bit of the base left. So this is what it looks like just intense minty type of yarn. So I put this together with a black strain of yarn and worked it up on my adding machine to make some socks. Obviously I have a ton of it left because it is sock yarn. So it's really, really thin. So I think I can go ahead and actually make I don't know, another pair. I was thinking of maybe making like some crew cut type of socks with this instead of doing like the full tube socks. Maybe I could do something different with that. Either way, I love this yarn. It's super, super soft. She has so many different ones on there too. I'm not sure once again, if it's on her site or if it's just like in her shop because there is very limited amount of the sock tail time. So I'm not sure if she's like moving away from that because she has a bunch of like fun new stuff coming up or not. But this, yeah, two ply fingering sock weight, 80% super wash moreno, 20% nylon. It says hand wash cold fiber friend and lay flat or block to dry. So for the socks, I did block this, especially when it comes to my hand dyed yarn. I'm going to take as nice of care of it as absolutely possible. I want to wear these socks for a really, really long time. So obviously I'm going to block it and I don't throw these in the dryer. Ah, Premier Basic Chunky. This stuff is awesome. So it's it's a bulky number five. That's the tag right there. Another type of yarn that I just constantly have in the yarn dungeon. This was something that I just whipped up a quick cowl for. It was a, we need to go somewhere and I wanted to make a new cowl for myself. Literally no other reason. Do I have a million other cowls? Absolutely. I could have totally used that, but I wanted this one. So this one is in the color steel, which is like a gray-ish type of color, but just big, thick, chunky, what does it use? Nine millimeter crochet hooks. Think of that and then how to make a cowl. It did not take any time at all to make this. So another just for me gift. What are you? Ah, yes. So this is 100% wool and it's called Wool Power. This is such a cute tag. Once again, this is from Hobie. Oh, it's called Happy Sheep. Here we go. Let's do the whole thing. Happy Sheep. And that's exactly what that looks like. Absolutely. Happy Sheep. Wool power. 100% pure wool. This was for a pattern for slippers that I created. And it was slippers. Then you go ahead and felt them. So I don't really have a lot of experience with felting. But this was a pattern that was super easy to do. It's a free pattern on their site. I'll link it down below. Check it out. But it literally tells you what you need. You can click on it. You can buy it from their site. Or if you already have it, it tells you everything you need. It ended up being kind of just like a square and you like folded it over in such a way that it ended up looking like a shoe. Then you just threw it through the wash and the dryer a couple times, felted it all up. I ended up throwing a shoe in the dryer. I had so many people that I had to reach out to. I was like, hey, tell me a really good way to felt some things really well because I can't kept pulling it out it would have like little bits of holes and like no matter how many times because I did this a couple of times I think I have three of them actually and none of them are even up to standards 
quite yet, but we're getting there. We are getting there. So they have all just been claimed as my practice ones right now. I was told to like agitation. So I did the water shock thing. So I put it into cold water, put it into hot water, put it into cold water, then ran it through the wash. And then when it was in the dryer, I threw in some tennis shoes with it to really like bang it up and everything, which that definitely did work a lot better. But I still, I think like a couple more times. And then once I get this all figured out, I'm gonna be like, okay, yes, these are super fun to make because they work up really quick. But it's just like, it's a new art form for me. I don't know all the tips and tricks yet, basically. And we are back, okay. So my battery just died, but I knew that was gonna happen because it always happens with this particular video because I have a lot to chit chat about. There's a lot of yarn for every single month and I have like a special place in my heart for every single one of these. So I gotta chit chat about it. Having said that, if you are still here, cheers to you ghoul. Let me know in the comment down below. Send me up a black heart. Let me know that you're still here chatting yarn along with me. We only have a few left actually. One more Mace of Skein, Shadow Cat. More, whoa, Wander, Diablo. That's a Diablo one, we already did that one. This one, oh yeah, this was part of my just clean things up and I don't like this yarn. So this is yarn that came with my new Centro knitting machine. It just literally says knitting accessories, that's it. So it's a very plasticky feeling type of yarn. Not something that you would ever find really, honestly, in a craft store. Maybe for like yarn to craft with for like kids this yarn would work well. So I just worked up a headband with it and it wasn't a bad headband. I don't know. I didn't like any of the colors that it came with. It was like a weird teal and then a baby pink and I think a purple or something like that. Anyways, I was just trying to use the yarn up, made a headband. Yeah, obviously I won't purchase any more of this and I don't even know if you can purchase any of this. Knitting accessories, that's literally all I know from it. It might just be the yarn made specifically for the Centro Knitting Machine. I don't know enough about it. All right, what else do we got here? One more, ah, yes, one more Miss Babs. This one is called Goblins and Ghouls, and I made socks out of this. I am obsessed with these. These are actually in the wash right this second because I love them so much. I use them pretty much, well, I mean, whenever they're clean, honestly, I do. This one is, again, it's a fingering weight. The link is already down below for Miss Babs. 92% super wash merino wool. This one had like a little bit of like shimmer or like a metallic strand through it. So it made really, really cool socks and goblins and ghouls. Actually, I think I have a little bit extra. Let me check. I thought I had a little, but this is like pretty much a whole hank of yarn right here. Okay, did not even notice that. So behind me is my cart that has all of my like hand dyed specialty yarns. So whenever I have a little bit of extra, I just leave it back there. So it doesn't get lost in like either my closet or my yarn coffin. And this just honestly got pushed to the bottom. This was something that I made at the beginning of March. The little bit of shimmer in there, it's super fun for socks. Again, this is actually still on Miss Bab's sites, even though it's a Halloween yarn. So I adore this site. Toby yarn is the last bit that we have in here. Um, oh, there are two different ones. Okay, so we have Hobie Snowstorm and then we have Hobie Amigo. So Hobie Amigo, it's a 100% acrylic yarn and this is stuff that I like to use for fingerless mittens once again. And did I make fingerless mittens with this? No, I made beanies with this as a gift. So it's big, thick, and chunky. I use a six millimeter crochet hook for this, but you can throw it in the washer. It's easy to maintain, easy to handle, which once again, that's why I like to use it for gifts because it's easy to handle. I don't have to tell anybody like, hey, here's a gift, now go ahead and hand wash it. Cause I just know like there's certain people that would just not appreciate that. That would be like, this is not a gift then. Uh, you can take it back. Thank you, I'll take a picture it and then you can have it back because I don't want that type of maintenance. The snowstorm has become one of my favorites to have in the yarn dungeon because it is 100% wool. Yes, 100% wool and eight millimeter crochet hook is what you use. There's only 50 grams of this, but I've been using it to remake all of my coasters. I have a couple of shelves that just have exclusively coffee mugs because I have a lot of coffee mugs. I need a lot of shelving for it. And I like to have a coaster under each coffee mug. I like having that option that I can grab the cup 
with the coaster with it. Do I need that many coasters? Absolutely not. But it's also kind of nice because the shelving, I painted the shelving as well. So that way my mugs don't like scrape the paint off and like get paint on the cup. It's just like an extra layer of protection there. Once again, Hobie doesn't do like the names of the yarn. Yeah, it just says color number five. So unless I get up on their site and pull it up, I have no idea what color it was, but I got a lot of grays, a lot of red, and I got some black as well too. If I were to guess, I would guess color number five is red. I could be totally wrong, but that was a couple new ones that I added to a couple of my mugs. And I found one of the coasters. This coaster is actually a pattern from Hobie too, which is how I found this yarn and why I decided to try it. So this is one of my earlier attempts at felting a coaster. Not terrible, but like you can still see there's a little bit of like there's a hole right there that's not completely felted yet but I'm not mad about it and I'm not gonna beat myself up over it because it was one of my first attempts so I decided just to use it and continue on it's been spilled on quite a few many times and then that way I can just throw it back in the wash and the dryer eventually it'll be nice and felted right I don't know that's the logic that I had behind it anyways we have officially reached the bottom of the busted up Sam used to be a planter. Sam planter was going to be a Sam planter. One of my cats knocked over the lamp and it crushed this and that's why it doesn't look exactly like the one that you can find on Spirit. But if you like this one and you wanna go ahead and snag this idea of putting your own yarn tags in here, they do still sell it on Spirit. It's totally there. There's still so many pieces that I didn't find. Like, where is that? I have no idea. It's gone forever. Or we'll just enjoy it for its imperfections at this point in time that's pretty much where I'm at all right goals that is all I have for you today so thank you so much for hanging out with me here in the yarn dungeon honestly these are some of my favorite videos to do because I could chat yarn all day every day and like going back an entire month of yarn through the tags of yarn is just genuinely fun to me so if you love this as well don't forget to thumbs up this let me know in the comments down below as well what type of yarn did you find for the month of March that you absolutely have to have in your own yarn dungeon? Like what is something that jumped out to you so much that you are now super obsessed with it? But once again, thank you so very much for hanging out with me. Have a fantastically spooky day and I will see you in my next video.